Hi, I'm Mary and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio and this video is the fourth video in our study on indigo. We have made a fructose stock, we've made the vat and now we are going to actually do the dipping. Um, our very first fiber in our very first fructose vat. So first of all, let's take a look at the vat itself and it is a beautiful vat. This was made a couple of days ago and it meets the four requirements for a good vat. Number one, it's warm enough. It's at about 100 degrees right now. Number two, it did have a flower of blue oxygen bubbles or air bubbles up here, but it's the sort of collapsed over time. Number three, it has a nice coppery film on top. I hope you can see that. And number four, when you push this scum aside, you should see kind of a nice yellow green or a golden brown a kind of a brownie green stock and that's what we do see now I am going to scrape this to the side because we don't want to have this film on the top when we dip we don't really want the fiber to pick up this film we can put it back in the vat when we're done it's good for the vat but we don't want it on the fibers. So I'm just going to kind of push it to the side for right now. By the way, I use these all the time for indigo dipping. Uh, you'll see how I use them um, in various ways. So we now have this beautiful vat. We are ready to start dipping. We need the fiber, of course. We need it to be clean and wet it out. And by that, I mean, and I'm looking to see that I don't have indigo on my hands, on my gloves. Um, by wet it out, I mean it is wet, excuse me, it is damp, but there's no excess water. Okay, so we're basically ready to dip, right? Wrong. You'll notice there's one problem. Look at the length of the hank of yarn, and this is Clickitat, the BFL yarn. The sediment in the vat comes up to probably about here. We don't want any fiber to hit that sediment ever. So we have to have a way of shortening it up so that it stays up above the sediment. Now this is a little tiny sample and notice because it's a little tiny sample I'm just using little tiny gloves. Um, I can just hold it and will hold it while I'm talking but if you have more and this dog, I don't know if you saw the dog or not, but this is the neighbor dog who's come up to visit. Um, I use this if I'm using yarns, not too many yarns of course, because it can't hold many. But notice it'll keep the yarn suspended, but won't hit the, hit the sediment. We'll look at other options when we look at uh, dipping more bulk, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in here. I'm going to put my timer on just to see about how long it takes. I'm not timing it for a specific amount of time. But while I'm holding it, I actually have prepared notes because there are things that I don't want to forget to uh, tell you while we're just waiting for this to, uh, to come, come blue. So here I go. In we go. Notice I'm not doing this, just holding it gently. Down we go. It will probably release some air bubbles. You can see a couple of bubbles up there on the surface. There's one. And I'm just going to gently move it around as I'm talking. So let me talk. The first thing is that besides the vat being warm, you want your ambient air temperature to also be warm. It's probably 5 o'clock right now on a summer evening. It's been a warm day. I think it's about 85 degrees. This is perfect for, um, for dipping in indigo. If you are dipping on a cold day, you will have problems that will not want to cooperate. Okay, so pick a warm summer day. Second thing I want to uh, point out is the size of this vat. I could technically put four ounces of fiber in here. That's about as much as I ever dip at one time. But I have to anticipate that when I pull that fiber out, it's going to take a lot of the, the, uh, the vat with it, and so I'm going to have a much lower vat. You need to consider how much you intend to dip at any one time and adjust your pot accordingly. 
I would say if you're new at this, think small. Smaller pot and smaller amounts of yarn or whatever to dip first. Okay, that's the second thing I want to say. The third thing I want to say is um, indigo itself is not a dye like the botanical um, dyes we've been playing with in the previous two groups. It is actually a pigment, which means it does not chemically bond to the fiber. It does fix to the fiber, but it is, it, there's not a chemical transformation. It actually sits on top of the fiber. It's, it's layered. Now, two things you have to consider. One, the longer you leave your fiber in the vat, the darker it becomes, of course, the more indigo it's taking up, but it can also have excess indigo left on top. So that indigo, that excess indigo, will do what's called crocking. It will rub, um, it, it will not wash out, it will have to be pressed out. And that's how, and I'm, I'm doing this on purpose, you have to push excess indigo out with pressure. So if you dip for too long of time, besides the fact that it could be hard on your fiber, if you dip for too long of time, you may end up with excess crocking. Some crocking is to be expected. Excess crocking where you simply cannot get it out ever means that the vat was imbalanced, there was a problem, and you basically have ruined your fiber. I know of what I speak. So you may want to consider dipping shorter amounts of time. If you want a darker blue, then come back. Take it out, take the fiber out, rinse it off. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then um, uh, put it back in and layer your, um, your color in between the times you've allowed it to oxidize. If it's oxidizing, it tends to fix to the fiber a little better. Okay, now, here's another thing. Um, I haven't put high glue in here uh, because I don't think it's going to need it, but I'll show you in our next video how to make the high glue if you want to use it for your wool. And last but not least, I, uh, I want you to expect goops. I want you to expect mistakes. This is a, both an art and a skill. You will need to make many vats. You will have to have much practice before you will feel comfortable with your own style. And if you don't make any goofs, any mistakes, I will be sorely disappointed because I have made many in the years I've been playing with Indigo. So I think I've touched kind of what I wanted to. Let's take it out. And I have to laugh because I forgot to put the timer on, so I don't know how many minutes this was. But let's just look to see what we've got. Now here it is. It's not the beautiful green from a, a the thiourea dioxide vat. It is more of an um, amber color, but you can see it's already changing colors as we take it out. I do not want to pull it all the way out where it drips air bubbles back in, so I'm going to do this. Can you see the color change before your eyes? I'm slowly letting the uh, extra drip back in without creating too many air bubbles. Here it is. It's slowly turning. And now I'm going to put it in water, believe it or not, for three reasons. Number one, I want to get it, get the pH down uh, fairly quickly. Okay? Water will do that. It will help lower the pH. Number two, water has oxygen in it and that is starting then to kind of seal or um, uh, uh, basically yeah. fix the blue. Okay, and number three, and I don't even remember what number three is now. Oh, it'll rinse out, obviously it'll rinse out some of the excess uh, indigo, not all of it, but a lot of it. So after I've rinsed it for a bit, I'm going to just gently squeeze it and I'll hang it to dry and it is still oxidizing which means it is still turning from kind of a greenish color and I really have tangled this up haven't I to the, um, the more familiar denim blue so there we have <laughs> I don't know what happened here why it got so tangled this is rather sad but we have our first rather funny looking Hank dyed a blue. Well, that's a mess. Let me show you some prettier ones. Here's what I did earlier today to show you some examples. This is embarrassing, this poor little egg. Okay, this one is time unknown. 
Let me show you though these, which is also, if you want to come a little closer, Roger, this is also the Blue Face Lister Click Attack yarn. This is, what is this? Um, five minutes timed, 10 minutes in the vat, 20 minutes. And depending upon what you dye, whether it's yarn or fabric or uh, loose fleece, uh, whether it's silk, cotton, wool, the blue will pick up differently. So anticipate a slightly different color each time. This is also, right here, this is also five minutes. Now this is Targi and a silk wool blend and a mohair boucle. And these, by the way, will be going into my second round of the handbook that's taking me forever to make. So 10 minutes, 10 minutes, excuse me, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So I don't know, how long have I kept this in? Did I keep this in? I'm, that's anybody's guess, and I will straighten this out. Um, as far as this attempt, I want to show you the wool flannel uh, that I've been playing with in all the study groups. I had wanted a very pale blue to start with, a medium range blue and a dark blue, but this is where you have to practice and you have to experiment because it surprised me. This is uh, three minutes, five minutes. Uh, let me see, do I have this right? I'm gonna have to check my notes again. I don't wanna tell you wrong on this. The squares are two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. So close and not light at all. So I would probably uh, dip at least for no more than a minute and maybe in a weaker bat where I've used up some of the indigo. The last thing I want to tell you is if you have a bunch of the hanks of yarn that I've sent you, um, you're probably wondering, well, what do you do with them? Well, you do this. You do experiments in time and you keep notes. You can also have kind of a fun little thing, and that's doing the ombre type of dipping. Um, I didn't do a very good job on this today. I wasn't paying attention, therefore I only have a small amount of blue and a, sm a white and a small amount of light blue, and then kind of all the same color down here. I think I might actually go back and dip this so it's against so what's really dark. I'll wet it first, of course. But you can see how you can have fun going from very light to very dark. If you do want to do this on a white t-shirt, uh, go for it, but practice first. Practice on everything. And the only other thing I would caution you is, to begin with, don't have an end project in mind. Just, just get your skills down uh, so that when you do actually go to make something, you will be satisfied with the results. Okay, we have a lot more to do. Um, next video will probably be balancing the uh, vat after you've dipped fiber in it for a while. And then of course we have the color, we have all sorts of things to come. So stay tuned. See you soon.